Hello and welcome to Behold the Lamb Presents. I'm Chris Shelton, your host. I want to thank you for joining us. We've entitled today's message, Gifted Peace. I would like to open our program today by sharing part of a quote that's found in The Signs of the Time, December 27, 1905, which reads, Before our Lord went to his agony on the cross, he made his will. He had no silver or gold or houses to leave to his disciples. He was a poor man as far as earthly possessions were concerned. Few in Jerusalem were so poor as he, but he left his disciples a richer gift than any earthly monarch could bestow on his subjects. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, he said. Not as the world giveth give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You can find that promise in the book of John, chapter 14 and verse 27. Reading on, he left them the peace which he had, which had been his, excuse me, during his life on earth, which had been with him amidst poverty, buffeting, and persecution, and which was to be with him during his agony, his agony in Gethsemane and on the cruel cross. The Savior's life on this earth, though lived in the midst of conflict, was a life of peace. While angry enemies were constantly pursuing him, he said, He that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I always do the things that please him. Read John 8, 29. No storm, listen to this, no storm of satanic wrath could disturb the calm of that perfect communion with God. And he says to us, my peace I give unto you. Friends, peace is a highly sought for state of mind that few seem to find in this world. From the quote I just read, could it be that people are not looking in the right places for peace? And when they've turned to Christ for this gifted peace, is it possible that they're not completely submitting to the requirements laid before them in order to receive this most treasured, treasured of gifts? Or perhaps, maybe like yourself or thousands others, they've never before realized that this was a gift that was available to them just for the asking. We hope that through this message with Pastor Kenny Shelton today that you will discover more about this gifted peace and begin to seek for it in Christ today. But first, let's visit 3ABN and listen to a song that is entitled Jesus and Me as sung by Jeff Pearls. I traveled alone Upon life's lonesome way My burdens were heavy And dark was my day I looked for a friend Not knowing that he Had all of the time Been looking for me And now it's Jesus and me For each tomorrow Jesus and me Forever I'll sing Of his great love for me Forever I'll tell it On land and on sea 
I'll stay by his side Contented I'll be For all of my life It's Jesus and me And now it's Jesus and me For it's tomorrow For every heartache And every sorrow I know that I can depend Upon my newfound friend And so till the end It's Jesus and me And now it's Jesus and me For each tomorrow For every heartache And every sorrow I know that I can depend Upon my newfound friend so till the end it's Jesus and me and so till the end it's Jesus and me Thank you for joining us once again here at Behold the Lamb Ministries. It is always a treat for us and we praise God for the opportunity to be able to come into your home and spend this time with you. You know, and we know we're spending time with you because of the calls and the cards and the letters and questions, things that come in, and I want you to know that we do enjoy that. Thank you very much for your, your prayers and your support. Keep this message going around the world. You know, the Bible is very clear on it. When this gospel has been preached to the whole world, Jesus is going to what? He's going to come, isn't he? So man, we can hasten the coming of Jesus, so why mess in this old world anymore, right? Let's just keep praying that the Holy Spirit will use us, right, to be able to do something to, to warn a soul that Jesus is soon to come. We're going to be talking about gifted peace today because of the world that we live in. I want to just make a couple little comments and then I want to have prayer with it. I've got something I found from Three Testimonies, page 202. Three Testimonies, 202. Please listen to the words and then let the Holy Spirit guide you, you know, in your thoughts toward this. It's not a very long paragraph, but it, it, there's a lot of food for thought that I, I read it and was guided to it. And I thought, you know, we... I need to pay attention to this. Uh, three Testimonies 202 says this. Angels of God are on the hearts and the conscience of people of other nations. Notice this. And honest souls are troubled as to they, they witness the signs of the times in the unsettled state of the nations. I think we can agree the unsettled state of the nations, what's happening in the world. And then a the question comes back. What will be the end of all these things? And then a little comment's made there, a couple of lines down, and I want you to just kind of place it there and uh, take it for what it's worth. The servants of Christ seem to be asleep. Isn't that interesting? The servants of Christ. We don't want that said about us, the servants of Christ. If we're really servants of Christ, how can we sleep? When the nations we see are angry with one another, they're unsettled. And we see, you know, that the conscience of other people are saying something is going on that we can't explain. We just can't explain. We don't know. They may not know God, but they know something inside is telling them something's going on. And they're asking these questions. We pray today as we study uh, this message of gifted peace that the Holy Spirit will say or do something that will touch your heart and your life for eternity. To be ready. That's our goal. That's right. Our object. Be ready for the coming of Jesus. I'm going to pray. Let's pray together, shall we? Father in heaven, thank you for your love and your mercy. We pray now for the power of thy Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you would consume my heart, my mind, my life. I, I pray that you would cleanse me from anything that, that needs not be there, any sin in my life. Oh, Lord, I need to be covered by your blood today. I need to hear from you, and I pray that your children will hear from you also, not from man, not what man has to offer, but what heaven offers today. May we receive it with gladness and joy. In Jesus' name, amen. When we talk about peace. Keep this in mind as we talk about a day, you know, the gifted peace. Uh, it's something I say when you say peace, the world is really looking for peace. The world wants peace. They're searching for it, but it's very difficult for many to find it. And they continue to look and look and look, and many times they look in the wrong places. 
And as we see disaster that we're told about many, many times from the Bible and spirit of prophecy, disasters by land and sea and air are numerous. War, it's a common thing. Things are going on right now. And in our country, it's almost unrecognizable anymore. The place that we live, the world that we live in, it's hard for me to recognize it because so many changes have taken place. In the last couple of years, we can say, we can see the law of God has been downtrodden and stepped upon, as it were, and trying to be, so it's been changed. We don't need it anymore. And the God that we love and we want to serve has been pushed out of our world. And so how can we expect to find peace? How can we expect to find direction? If he's not here, is it going to take Christ in our hearts and in our lives to have that peace? Or can we find it somewhere? Can we find it in a job? Can we find it in finances? Can we find it? I was up early this morning, and I, I found this. This is a song. and if, Will you just kind of bear with me for a while? If I see you sleeping, I'll say, wake up. This is a song that I used to hear, I grew up with as, so many years ago, and it just it touched my heart then, and so somehow I ran across it early this morning, and I got my pencil, and I said, what are all those words? And some of you will recognize, others will not, but I just, I feel compelled to read it. I'm not going to sing it, Ben, don't get excited, <laughs> but... The song is entitled, and, and just slip your hand up real quietly if you, if you recognize it. If Jesus came to your house, okay, I got one, will there be two? I see two, will there be three? Will there, you see what I mean? That's, some a little older have heard that. If Jesus came to your house, here's the way it goes, to spend a day or two. If he came without warning... I wonder what you would do. If he came unexpected, just dropped in on you. Ah, oh, I know you'd give him your nicest room to such an honored guest. Hmm. And all the food that you would serve to him would be the very best. And you would keep reassuring him that you're glad to have him there in your house and you glad to serve him in your home and this joy beyond compare to have him hmm. but when you saw him coming would you I we say run out to meet him at the door arms are outstretched in welcome to your heavenly visitor hmm. or would you have to change your clothes come on somebody would you have to change what you have on before you let him in? Or would you have to hide some magazines and put the Bible where it had been? Would you turn off the radio and hope he hadn't heard and wish you hadn't uttered that last loud hasty word? Would you hide your worldly music and put some hymn books out. Could you just let Jesus walk in? Or would you rush about? And I wonder. If the Savior spent a day or two with you. Would you go right on doing the same things that you always do? Would you go right on saying those things that you always say? Would life continue as it does from day to day? Would your family conversations keep up its normal pace? Would you find it hard each meal to say, table grace? Would you sing the songs you always sing and read the books that you always read? And to let him know the things on which your mind you feed your mind and get your spiritual food. Would you take Jesus with you everywhere you plan to go? Or maybe you change those plans for just a day or so. Would you be glad for him to meet your very closest friends? Or hope that they'd stay away until his visit ends? 
Would you be glad to have him to stay forever on and on? Mm. Or would you just sigh with a great relief when at last he was gone? It might be interesting to know the things that you, that I would do if Jesus came in person to spend some time with me or with you. If Jesus came to your house, here's our question. If he came to your house, what would you do? You know, that's pretty heavy. It's kind of long, and it is a song, but some of you older recognize it. But wow. I mean, what a pertinent question for the hour that we're living in when people are looking for, you know, some answers in the world today and certainly on peace. But would we have to change our whole world if Jesus came? And after all, he does come right through the power of the Holy Spirit into our homes with us all the time and sees those things that you're reading, sees those things that you're, you know, your activity, sees your friends, sees how you dress and maybe how you don't dress. Would we be comfortable to have Jesus in our home? It's nice to have people sometimes to remind you of who, who you are or who you represent. And I say my wife does that quite often to me. I get a little excited, whatever. She'll say, hey, hey. I say, huh? Remember who you represent. Now, that'll change your attitude quick. It doesn't take any more words than that. Remember who you represent. Man, that's, that's a beating. But maybe it'd be a good question. The world is looking for peace, and we know they're looking for peace. I don't know how many of you here, maybe you, you've heard about, they call it, it's, it's not GPS, it's GPI. The GPI, and it simply means Global Peace Index. There's actually such a thing that was formed in 2007. It cost a lot of money to find all these, you know, all that's going on in every country of the world. And they begin to look at all these things and what's happening in different parts of the country to try to say where peace really is at or where it's not at and where it's likely to blow up. It's the world's leading global peacefulness. And right now it's in over 163 countries, nations of the world. Wow. Three aspects that they judge it on. They judge it, number one, they judge it on society's safety. So when they go to certain countries, first thing is society, the people who live there, how's, their, how's the safety measure here? Number two, security. How secure is this country? And number three is they look at the military, militarization of that country. Can it protect its people? Because they're looking for peace and they're trying to find out where it's all at. And are they looking in the right place? They're saying we we can develop, if we look and put all these statistics together, a peaceful society. I mean, what they're looking at right now covers 99.7% of the world's population. But that shows the, you know, as, as the last couple of years of putting it together, shows it's only deteriorated, they said, by 1%. Huh. In 2021, the GPI revealed a world in which the conflicts and the crisis, and you know things have changed. You look at the date we're talking about here, 2021 and before. Conflicts and crises that emerged in the past decade, they say, have begun to abate. It's almost like, hang on, it's, going to, it's getting better right now. Hang on, it's going to abate. But then they look at it and they say, wait a minute. Those that have abated is only being replaced with a new wave of tensions and uncertainties. You see that. Some of it go off of the scene, isn't that right? You see, and the new ones come on. The devil's not done yet. Again, be reading the book and you know how it's going to turn out. But there's still tension. There's uncertainty As a result of COVID-19, look how the world has changed. And it's not over with yet. If you you think it is because you don't have a mask on right now, I'm going to ask you to think again. They're already, oh, can I say advertising? 
They're already telling what's going to happen in the fall of this year and how many deaths they are expecting. It's almost like they're planning it. Just, just think. So it's been nice for it to be a little bit at ease, don't you think, for a while and, and have a little freedom again. To go places, do things, say, you know, but, but right now they're saying, don't hang on to that. It's going to change. There's going to be even more deaths than before. Well, we'll see. God knows he's still in charge. But don't think it's over. There's rising tension in major powers of the earth, are there not? There's a jockeying back and forth to who is going to rule supreme. And they're rubbing against each other to the point to where they're getting a little bit sore. These major powers. There's a gap that is widening between the least and the greatest, as it were, the most peaceful countries and the ones that's most violent. It's going like this. And they're saying, why? But the most peaceful countries in the world have declined, 25 of them, by 12.1%. Something's going on. Something is changing. Tensions growing between the United States and China. There's no doubt about it. You think, what does this do with peace? Because we have to put our minds around what is happening in the world. The stress and the strain on people in positions, in high positions, our leaders of our country, leaders of our churches. What message would God have us to give at this point in time? I love about, you know, the message we're talking about, peace. I love that. But the reality of it is that we have these other things that might beset us, and we need to know how to handle it. United States and Russia. You think about it. China and Russia. Over the control, arms control. The war between Russia and Ukraine. Isn't that sad? Because it's been going, hold up, three months or more. Right, a little more. It's almost, it's almost like we've forgotten. In the first two or three months, man, it was every, t- every station you turn to, every radio, every station. Now it's gone about, it's gone, we've got a shortage of baby milk. And I know that's big time. I, I mean, I understand that. But you see what I mean? It's, before they wouldn't let anything come, the border, nothing come in between. But now it's like, oh, and the, but we got pallets of it down. Can I say that, Jan? Is that all right? It's just the truth. We need to look at what we're up against right here. But in our own country, our babies can't get the formula that they need. So something's going on. China, North Korea, look at it. My, my. Great powers and tensions. Competition. It's returned. I found out that the world has become more complex and interconnected than ever before. And we're talking one world stuff. You hear that a lot. Isn't that right? But we're so interconnected now. We have to be very cautious what's going on in other places of the world. But being so, you know, interconnected, we have to, there's other risks that are out there more than maybe ever before with the results being as some call, one guy called, he said, this is the age of unpeace. Not of peace, but of unpeace. Because we're not sure what's going to happen. And the result of some maniac. Can I say maniac? Maniac. In control or pushing the button. You know what I'm saying? Somebody. It, it, it changes the whole world just like that. Is that not true? And you know the maniac ahead of that is a debt devil. It's number one. I mean, this is nothing new for a man to want to take over the world. They've been doing it from the very beginning of time. They'll do it by peace if they can. They'll do it by war if they can. They just want to be in control. There's plans in place now. I just, all I want to talk to you about, there's plans in place. You need to be reading, study. You need to keep your spiritual ears open, your spiritual eyes open, and the Word of God open. What prophecy tells us is going to take place. Keep them open. Big question. Is peace attainable in this world? Is it? There's one big company, research, Pew Research Company, dot, you can find out on .org. And they do a lot of research on things like this. And here's what they say. They said, they're trying to look at, we're looking at peace, and we're looking at why is there so many failures over here? Why is there a confrontation over here? Maybe there's not over here. Something's going on. They say here, as they study it out, Christians form the biggest religious groups with 2.3 billion people. 
Listen, there's almost, what, 7 billion people on the planet. Something's still not right. Christians form, and again, Christians, profess Christians. Just say Christ. It doesn't mean that they are at all. Somebody's still with me. But we're looking for, we have peace. If peace comes by Jesus, inviting him into our hearts and our life, right? Let's get that clear as we, as we go on with our study here. So really, only less than a third of the world population calls themselves Christians. Could that be possibly one of the problems that we can't find peace? Because Christ is not in it. God's not in it. Only a third profess, and then you can cut that way on down, on down, down, and God can do that. I'm not trying to be judgmental with it. But everybody says, Lord, Lord, is not going to enter the kingdom. Is that true? Amen. Say, Lord, all you want, but unless you mean it from the heart, it's not, going to, it's not going to work. You know that. Let's give you just a couple more figures here as we go, because remember, 7% of the world's population is atheist or agnostic. Did you get it? 7% of the world population. That's don't hold, it, hold me to it. Do your own figuring. I'm, I have difficulty with 2 plus 2. But that's, that's approximately 500 million people in the world that they don't need God. They don't know God. They're just against God and everything. That's an awful lot. Of, that's a lot, of, a lot of power on the enemy's side, if you know what I'm talking about. Unrest. Doesn't it seem right now as we get early here, doesn't it seem that with a, a lack, a lack of Christians in the world today, numbers, you can say if you want to, or those who, right, those who don't believe in God at all, we can look and we say, wait a minute here, there's no peace. Could it be due to the absence of God in that country? Now, let me throw two, a couple things out to you real, real quick. Now, just I'll chew on it if you want to. Because we're talking about atheists and so on. China, all kind of problems. True? Not trying to be critical. Just look at it. China and then Russia are the major contributors to the percentage of atheists and agnostics. Did you get it? There's more in their countries. And look where they're at all the time. And look what they're doing all the time. Russia and China. That's Pew Research says that. And a few more countries, if you just want to know, and then we'll just we'll move on with it, fit into this group. So you think about what's happening in this country. Why is this happening? Why are these people? Why are they at war all the time? What's happening right here? You realize even, even Vietnam is 81% atheist. 81%. You see all the time we spend over on all the deaths and all that during the Vietnam crisis. Could that be a contributing factor that God was just not allowed there. Just, just think about it. You have Denmark, you have Norway, you have Sweden. These are all anywhere from 50 to 80 percent atheists, agnostic. They don't believe in God. But every time you hear it's something started in one of these countries over there. Am I true? Norway, Denmark, Sweden, all that starts over here and then starts filtering to us. Japan, 65 percent don't believe in God. But there's something going on in some of these countries all the time. And maybe because it is an absence, God is not there. He's not invited there. And there's no peace. So could this lack of belief in the true God of the Bible then contribute in some way to the unrest and the lack of peace in the world? I say it does. Remember, God has been asked to leave. He's been demanded to leave. People, have shake, they take their fists and they shake it in his face. They have no idea what they're doing. No clue. You would never do that if they did. But they've chosen another God. They want another God. They want to be led by something different than the world. So I ask you, what does the Bible say about God as our peace? Gifted peace. What does God say? I need to know what God says about peace for me. I think I'd go crazy if I didn't know there was a God that sat on the throne. And the God that's ruling in the universe, when I see this devastation and death and this miserable, and the, ooh, I almost said one liar on top of the other. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say that. It's hard to know what truth is. The only way you can know is to know what the Word of God, this is it. Let's be honest about it. It doesn't matter. I'm not trying to save somebody's feelings. Well, I'm not trying to hurt their feelings. But we need to look at the reality of this thing. I can know. I can't know what Joe Blow down here, his will is for me. He might tell you one thing and mean another. Are you still with me? 
He's loving you and hugging you and stabbing you at the same time. Somebody needs to get that. God is not that way. Very familiar passage of Scripture. I, I go to Jeremiah 29, 11. You know that God says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. These are good. Did you know? God said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Please put yourself in that group today. He's pointing his finger at you and finger at me. He said, I know, I know what I think about you. I know the thoughts I have towards you. And he said, uh, thoughts of what? So here's the word we're looking for. First of all, I have thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. Do you have an expected end? Are you planning for an expected end or like, I don't know? You know, today we have a very difficult time in Adventism of saying that I'm saved. And I understand why, don't you? I understand. Saved, it means it's completed, it's done, and so on and so forth. But the world, a lot of times, they don't realize that. We've come up with this, well, I'm in a saving relationship. That's good. And I realize it's not over till it's over. When it's over is when I stand on the sea of glass. You see what I mean? When I'm on that sea of glass, I know it's over. I'm, I'm saved forever saved by the grace of God. But sometimes, you know, we look at the, what's going on. We're saying, oh, man, I see there's unrest. I see there's, you know, there's, there's no peace in this world. What in the world's going on? God said, I know what I think about you. I, it, it's peace. I want it. Christ right here in this. Look at it closely. Christ reveals the Father's heart toward us. Isn't that beautiful? He reveals the heart of God to us to say, I know, and I want peace, and I want you to get along. He, and he said, look, I'll prove it. I sacrifice my son. My son's willing to sacrifice his life. He's willing to come. And we know that God hates sin. Evidently, we don't here in this world. It seems we still like it. We're still here. God hates sin. And we know, what have you heard all your life? He loves the sinner. And it's still true. He loves the sinner. That love that he has is stronger than death. It's awesome to think about. Christ, God, gave everything possible to redeem man. Amen. What more could they have done? They couldn't. What have you done? What have I done? God opened all of heaven. Emptied all of heaven because he saw Jan down here. Or he saw Kenny wandering around over here and don't know where he's at. And he didn't want me out in the North Fort. He wanted to bring me back in. If you don't see it personal, you're not going to get it. You're looking at everybody else today, you're not going to get it. Please look at it. Heaven was emptied for you. It makes a difference in my life. This peace that he's talking about doesn't come from the world. You've heard it all your life, but please believe it. It's not in this world. And the longer you live, the, I think, and older we get, is the more I understand it, I hope. That it's not happiness, peace that God wants us to have. It's not in this world or can come from this world. It has to be outside of this world. And I'll say this. I'll just throw a line in. You know, I'm, I'm good about throwing lines in sometimes. I don't know if you like it or not, but some have thrown it back. And I can take that too, by the way. Is it okay to be honest about it? Oh, I don't like who likes it, but I can take it. Because I know when you're talking, different people are going to take things different ways, and they're going to let you have it sometime. I'm good about letting them, talking to them. Jesus never purchased peace by compromise. With the, did you get it? We want to have peace desperately. But when the world talks about today, it's always, if you do this and I do that and this group does this and that, we'll have peace. With evil. Well, it, God, Jesus never, ever did that. And so you cannot do it and I cannot do it. Remember, Christ's peace that he offers you and me today is from within. It's got to come from within and it's supposed to remain. Once it gets in, it's supposed to remain through all the difficult Test and trials that come your way or my way as God's working out my salvation. It says work out your own salvation. We know it's turning over to God. Let him work. Isn't that right? And this peace he's offered me is to laugh, last through these difficult times. If you're giving up now, if you're weak and you're faint-hearted right now, we need to pray more than ever before. We're just beginning the difficult part of the race. 
and we're going to need more than we ever had. Let me just read something, uh, Second Testimonies 5.1.4. Now remember, I, I, I never apologize for reading the Spirit of Prophecy. And I don't like it when you say no. Somebody's got to get that now. You know, I'm not wasting my, am I wasting my time with that? No, it makes a point. You see what I'm saying? Because I love it. I thank God for it. If it's untruth, we throw it out. I haven't found any in all these years. Anyway, no greater evidence need to be asked. Now, again, why don't people have peace? Why is it they're still fighting it? Why is it a Christian? You've been a Christian for 40 or 50 years, and you still don't have peace. You don't know if you've been saved, as it were. You don't know if you have a relationship with Christ. You want to know that you have one, but you're not sure what to do. You're still wandering around as, I don't know. You're scared to death that some other Christian of another faith is going to ask you, have, are you saved? And you're like, oh, I don't, I don't know how to answer him. Remember, some of you know here, one of the guys here in the church one time years asked me about that. I don't have an answer. I said, you don't answer. Answer is very simple. By God's grace, I'm saved. Yeah, by God's grace. That's the only way anybody's going to be saved is by the grace of God. Because you know what? Oh, I need to be careful. Now, I love you. We love you. But you're not worth, right, being saved on your own. I'm not worth it being saved. It's impossible. So by the grace of God. Isn't that right? It's all about him. Christ. Now, notice, if you don't have this peace, if you're still struggling and you're fighting, and soon somebody says, oh, gas is almost $5 a gallon. I'd like to get a hold of somebody sometime. I think you know what I'm talking about. It's enough to, for people to lose their Christian experience if they had it over the gasoline prices. Oh, it's horrible. But yes, but we can't because it's liable to get worse yet. But you know what? God is the provider, is he not? He's my source. He's always been. He's always met that need. Why should I worry now in my later years of life? He's never failed me one time. Not one. I've failed him a lot of times. He's never failed me. He's always been there. He's always been on time with these blessings. I'm telling you, it's awesome. We kept saying, oh, boy, remember that last elf had been here before? He wouldn't have died. Sometimes we're like that. If you don't have that peace, notice this. No greater evidence need to be asked that a person is at a great distance from Jesus. If you don't have peace, it's saying that you are a distance from Jesus. Did you get it? And living in neglect of secret prayer, neglecting personal piety. Then the fact that he thus talks, this person talks doubt and unbelief. If you're talking doubt and unbelief in the promises of God and God's word today, you are the devil's handyman. Say that. It's true, isn't it? You can't do it. If you're talking doubt and you don't know what's going to happen, we're falling apart right now, we're not going to have peace. You can't have peace. The only way you can have peace is to surrender all to Jesus. Isn't that right? I mean, his hands. You know, I've heard people say, well, no, I don't want to. Listen, you live in this world very long, you're going to die. If Jesus don't come, you're going to die. You can only die once. Well, I don't want to go through it. You're going to die anyway. Let's be ready. Jesus said, you die for me, you're going to live with me, man. Don't talk doubt and unbelief. Notice this, because his surroundings are not favorable. You heard people? Oh, I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. <clears throat> I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. Have you heard that? Many, and, and, and true a lot of times, I mean, it's difficult. I'm not trying to make light of that. I'm just simply saying, we, better, we can't help where that's at, but God is able even on the wrong side of the tracks. God is able in another country somewhere when you think you don't, we don't have this, we're not. you have God. Amen. He wants you in the kingdom. Notice this, as soon as God proves them and tests their faith, they waver. We're talking about peace, we don't have peace. As soon as a little test comes, they lose it. They just lose it. Well, that shows right then and there. We're not studying. We're not praying. We don't, we don't really have that connection with him. This is certain. I'm going to throw this out as certain. And you tell me, if it's not, throw it back. You'll have to throw it back harder than I throw it at you, or I'm not going to listen to you. Think about this. Those who follow his, Jesus, right, follows Jesus' direction. If you follow Jesus' direction, you will, ooh, you will never meet defeat. Amen. Simple words. But you will never meet defeat if you follow Jesus' direction. 
But I tell you this, you want to follow them, you're a little too straight-laced for some people. You follow the directions of God, people don't want to deal with you. And here comes some of the smarties to try to tell you how to tone it down a little bit, and you'll do a lot better, and people will accept you, and ministry will grow. And Do what Jesus says in the Word, regardless of anybody follows or not. Do what God has said in His Word, and you will not be defeated. It's guaranteed based on the promises of God. Jesus makes it so clear there in John 16, 13. Can anybody take 15 more minutes or should I just sit down? Remember what he said? Jesus makes it so clear in John 16, 33. Listen, if we're not paying attention, the time will come when you will wish, I wish I had it. I'll need these promises because there'll be nothing else. There'll be no Brother Ed to pat me on the back and lift me up out of the mud and pray for me. Just put ourselves in there. You're going to be standing alone. You've got to have this in your heart. You've got to have it in your mind. John 16, 33 says that real peace can only come from him. We know that. These things have I spoken to you. Is that what the Bible says? That in me you might have what? Here, that's the answer. We can go on still read but much more. But he said, in me ye shall have peace. If you want peace, it has to come from him. In the world, Kenny, you're going to have tribulations. You think it's going to be nice and all these roses and everything's going to go good? No. Listen, the Lord revealed to me, I said, many, many years ago in a dream to me, the Lord told me, he said, Kenny, you're going to be a difficult one to save. That's in human language. Are you still with me? Really? You're going to be a difficult one to save because you're a difficult person. Because sometimes too hard-headed. Somebody still... Okay, you know, you're such a hard-headed person, Kenny. You just, I'll just talk to the, you see, I mean, really, it's, and it's something that startled me. And he said, I'll show you where you're at. And he showed me this great big staircase going up toward heaven. And I'm climbing that, but I'm way down low. I don't care where you're at, as long as you're on it. As long as you're on it. If you're just reaching for that first step, praise God, keep reaching. It may be kind of difficult, but sink those fingertips into that step. And so I started smiling. I smiled a little bit because, ooh, I, I, I made a step or two. You know? And then just enough, and I'm thinking, oh, my, my finger, they're getting tired. I'm hanging on to these steps. And then I looked up, and somebody was prying my fingers so that I'd lose control, and I would fall. And it was the enemy. I'm not going to let you climb those steps, buddy, without... And just about the time I couldn't hold any longer, my toes caught the step below. My toes were on the step, and I didn't go down any farther. And then he immediately left there and went down to my toes, and he started chiseling, as it were. Somebody stay with me spiritually here. And I said, oh, no, it's almost gone. It's cracking. It's crumbling. I'm not going to make it. And the Lord said, reach up. Come on, somebody. Reach up. And I reached for the next step and got a hold of it. And then my feet went. And here he went back up here. I, I can go on with it. But you see what I'm saying right there? This is real stuff. He's not going to let you just, you know, the enemy's going to try you. He's going to test you. He's going to chisel the daylights out of you if you let him. Don't let him do it. Stay in there. Hang in there by God's grace. Jesus said, you're going to have tribulations, Kenny. You know, but no, finish the verse. Be of good cheer. What? For I have overcome the world. He says, you've got nothing. Left. Come on my side. I've already overcome the world. The enemy, I can toss him out at any time, right? I tossed him out every time I met him while I was on this earth, defeated him, right? Remember only one that ever defeated the enemy, right? Only one in the entire universe ever was, was Jesus, right? No one else. Jesus is the only one, so I need Jesus, you see? So the answer to peace, now remember, if you don't have it, so let's do it this way here. If, right? If you come to me and you say, I just don't have peace, I'm torn up about this, I'm going to say pray more and study your Bible more. And I've got stuff to do. But we're, we're finding out. We know. Stay in the Word, pray more, right? You start having that peace. That's the only way you're going to have it. Be of good cheer. He said, he just told me the, the what, line or two up for, you're going to have tribulations. Be of good cheer. Lord, how can I be of cheer, good cheer when the devil's chiseling me to death? Because I'm going to be there with you and I'm going to help you. I'll make sure you don't go down, but I'm going to lay him chisel a little more because you need it. Is that okay to say that? I needed it. You think he's going to let me chisel 
let the devil chisel on me if I don't need it. Uh Uh-uh. He loves you too much. So when you get chiseled, okay, you got it. Christ told his disciples that they were to work the way he worked. Right? Follow in his footsteps. Wherever he walked, you can walk. It's good. Bend on him. And by his grace, keep on going, believing and hoping in everything. I love that. In everything. Doesn't mean just a little partial here. Everything. When it comes your way and it's all falling apart, just rejoice in it. I know he's overcome. I know he said, I'm going to. He know, I know he's thinking everything that's good for me. I know he opened all of heaven for me. I can believe and I can hope by the grace of God. Certainly for the answer. I'm going to read this from Desire of Ages. I like it. Not a better book, I don't think, on the life of Christ. Desire of Ages, page 152 and 3 says this. If, if your eyes are fixed on Jesus. Okay, let me get your attention. If your eyes are fixed on, if your eyes are fixed, it makes sense. If your eyes are fixed on Jesus, we shall see a compassionate Savior. He knows when you've been beat up. He knows what you've gone through. He's right there with you, suffering right along, trying to just say, why don't you call my name? Let me help you. I can send a 1,000 angels or 10,000. Well, just let me help you. And we're too stubborn sometimes. Oh, we've got to want to go back for more if you know what I'm talking about. You look at Jesus, you'll see a compassionate Savior that loves you with an everlasting love. Notice this. And shall catch the light from his countenance. I need to look at Jesus. There's light. It's not darkness over here and darkness over here. It's light when I look to Jesus. Now notice this. Whenever, whenever his spirit reigns, I could say wherever, whenever his spirit reigns, notice this, there peace abides. Amen. It's just what the scriptures are telling us, right? Wherever his spirit is, Peace is there. If you don't have peace, it's because he's not there. Does that make sense? I'm not trying to judge, condemn anybody. I'm just simply saying, I'm looking for myself. If I don't have peace, it's because what? He's not there. I won't let him there. If he is there, I catch the light of his countenance. I see the joy on his face. All he went through, he counted as joy, right? As he sacrificed his life for you and me. Notice this, reading on, and there will be, ooh, there's going to be joy also, somebody's going to be happy. So when I see we come to a service and you're not happy, something's missing. And I know what that something is. So what we all do is dismiss it and go home. Yeah. No. Or what? Come there's Remember, where the Spirit is, there's going to be joy and peace and happiness. And it goes on to say, where His Spirit is, there's calmness. Mm. There's holiness. There's, and then all we have to do is trust in God. Man, that's beautiful when you think about it. If we have no peace today. So see, this is going to keep me from talking negative. I'm the only one. Okay, I, I, I've, I've done my best. Think about it. Now we are here, we're going to be ashamed to talk negative. <laughs> Isn't that right? Because where his presence is, there is peace. That's what it says. He said, I came to give you my peace. Man, it's clear. Peace comes from Christ within. The Bible says he's my hope, right? He's my, he's my glory by following his teachings and following his way. Here's one way. If you case, well, I still haven't got it yet. There's one way that we can really find and have peace with God is this. Desire of Ages 152. Notice what it says. As disciples of Christ, we should not mingle with the world from a mere love of pleasure. Stay with me. To unite with them in their folly. Some of you are fooling around with the world and their folly right now. You're going, the devil's going to get you. There's no doubt about it. Such association can result only in harm. We should never notice this. Here's a, you've read this many times before, but some of us just go right back. Some of us, I can't believe, Adventists, you, you listen to radio, a preacher is preaching it's a false doctrine and, and teachings and doctrines of devil, and you sit there and listen to it. Is it I need to get this off my chest. No, it's true. Because if you know what truth is, you know untruth as soon as you hear it. And why would you continue to, right? Why would you continue to listen to it? Somebody needs to check the signals. I go on here because it's left me here. I don't know what time it is. That means you've got another hour coming, bless you. Okay. We should never, did you get this? We should never, Desire of Ages 152, give sanction to sin by our words. 
joining in when somebody's talking dirty. Are you still with me? Telling a nasty joke, and then we kind of, you don't have to say a word. Just, <laughs> just, all right. Or our deeds. Or notice this. We shouldn't be by our silence. In other words, you can be around something that's going on. You know it's not right, and you're not saying a word, but you're silent. That's wrong, too. Or by our presence. You can't go where lies, right, or the devil are being taught. That makes sense? You can't go and sanction it, and by listening to it, you lend credence to it. And people will say, well, you were there, and you heard it, and da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Make sure you know what truth is and be where God wants you to be. The only one who can give peace, we understand, and we're coming down to the end. Five Testimony 649 says this. And again, do not look at men. Do not look at men and hang your hopes on their, them. Feeling they are infallible. But look to Jesus constantly. There's the word constantly. Constantly looking to Jesus. As soon as you take your eyes off of Jesus, the enemy will have you for lunch. Does that make sense? Take your eyes off of him. He's just waiting. He can't, listen, he can't do a thing as your eyes on Jesus. That's what, see, that's good news. So if I fail, it's because I took my eyes off of Jesus. He can't do a thing to you as long as we're beholding Jesus, the Lamb of God. Man, why can't we do that? It just seems so simple. We need to be praying, oh, God, help me keep my eyes fastened on you. Especially when other things are happening around you, it's not very good. Would that not be our first step? Would be to surrender to him. If you really want that peace that passes all understanding. Desire of Ages 331 quickly here. It said, those who take Christ at his word and surrender their souls to his keeping, their life is, you know, lives to his ordering will find peace and quiet too. I've said, the older I get, all I want is peace and quiet. Yeah. Herb, is that all right to say that? But, me and you might get that. There's times I just want peace and quiet. I think some of you know what I mean. The world's in agitation all the time. It's too much. That's why Jesus said, come aside. Brother Terry, you remember? He said, come aside and rest a while. Isaiah 26, 3. He said this. Notice, I will keep him. Most of you, you got this memorized. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose is stayed on because he trusteth in thee. Isn't that beautiful? Now, this is, this is true or it's not. I don't have peace. I don't have peace. You don't have peace because you're not in the Word. You don't have Christ in your heart. We have Christ in our heart. Even when things are not going right, we may be crying with tears and we're all concerned all about it, but we say, God, I still trust you. Jesus prayed, oh, if it be possible, let this cup pass. Do you remember that? Keep your, if your mind is stayed on Christ, the enemy cannot get you. That's impossible. And that trust, that's such a word. Man, what a word. That I went to the dictionary and looked it up like I didn't know. I guess I didn't. It has to do with our faith. It has to do with our firm belief in what is truth. It's that we're confident in Him. We have hope in Him. We have a future with Him. You have no future in this world. And so I looked at that and I thought, man, what does all that mean? I looked at the dictionary and it's uh, like this, all of, just about trust. And I started putting it together. I said, what does that mean, Lord? When we accept Christ, we become stockholders. Somebody stay with me. In the bank of heaven. And then we turn over our stocks to Jesus to a, or to a trustee, only one, Jesus. We turn everything we have over to Jesus. When we do this, notice this, he issues us trust certificates. I know it all wasn't in the dictionary, but that's what it rang on my mind. Are you still with me? He's going to give me trust certificates or Bible promises. Amen. Woo! Right? I surrender everything, give everything to him. He's a trustee, and he gives me all these promises back. Oh, that's good. And he gives us dividends. Woo! That means blessings of life and health and strength and protection and, again, a sure future. Wow. As a stockholder, now we have part of ownership in the universe. Oh, somebody stay with me. In which we can keep forever. It will never be taken away from us. We're owners of it. Amen. Now we allow our trustee or Jesus to do what he will with our life without anxiety. Amen. Being ruffled at everything that comes by without anxiety or fear of the outcome. That's what most generally we have fear. 
We're afraid of the outcome. It won't be what we think it ought to be. We can't afford to lose all this. We can't afford to go here. We can't afford blah, 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 blah. No anxiety. Do you get it? There's no anxiety when we feel it really commit to him. We don't have that. Why? Because, the Bible says, because we trust in him. And because we trust in him, I have perfect peace with God. That doesn't mean I won't weep. That don't mean we'll go through different things and concerns. But I have perfect peace that it's not my will, but thine be done. Should that not be our prayer? And I'm going to pray right now with 20 seconds left. Because let's pray together. Shall we, Father in heaven, thank you for your precious word. Thank you you reminded us of who you are and who we are. Lord, we long for the day that you will come. Help us to have that peace that passes all understanding in the midst of a whirlwind and storm. We can be more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. In his name we pray and for his sake. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to spending some time with you in the near future. Hello and welcome back, friends. Signs of the Times, December 27th, 1905 states, Those who take Christ at his word, who surrender their souls to his keeping, their lives to his ordering, will find peace and quietude. Don't you want that peace? Don't you want that quietude? Nothing of the world can make them sad when Jesus makes them glad by his presence. In perfect acquiescence, which is the reluctant acceptance of something without protest, there is perfect rest. The Lord says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth thee. Isaiah 26, verse 3. The heart that is in harmony with God is a partaker of the peace of heaven and will diffuse its blessed influence all around. What a blessed gift that God has bestowed upon all who will be willing and desirous of accepting this gift. The gift of peace, the peace that passes understanding, the peace that is only found as our hearts are fully surrendered to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I know I want the gifted peace. How about you? I hope you want it too. We want to thank you for joining us today for this study, and we hope that you will continue to support Behold the Lamb Ministries with your prayers and with your systematic giving of support. We need that to keep these messages coming into your home week after week after week, and we want to thank you, and we look forward to hearing from you. Today's message, Gifted Peace, is now available on DVD or CD if you choose. All you have to do is give us a call here in the United States at 618-942-5044. That is Central Time. Or you may also email us at BeholdTheLambMinistries at Yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your request to Behold the Lamb Ministries, P.O. Box 2030 here in Illinois, 62948. And don't forget to look for Behold the Lamb Ministries on YouTube. We look forward to hearing from you. May God continue to richly bless each and every one.